Welcome, welcome to all our listeners listening to Season 2, Episode 22 of The Great Sources. Today's share is called What Makes Eretz Yisrael Special? Last year we spoke about, we gave a summary, a synopsis of the whole series. And I sent it to a lot of people. Um, I hope a lot of you that are listening now are those who joined us last week, and I hope you take this opportunity to learn more. The response to last week's year was stupendous. It was wonderful. Um, There's so much interest in learning about this and thinking about it in a real and practical way, and I am optimistic that something very great is happening that we can make happen together. So today, now what we have to understand is, well, what have we learned, Sachakol, to sum it all up, in a word, we've learned that living in Eretz is very important to the Torah. That's the Aleph and the Taf. The whole series and all the things we explored were to essentially establish that point and show how the Torah wants us to live in Eretz Yisrael. Now, as we discussed in this series, there are really two ways to look at that. You can talk about the mitzvah of living in Eretz Yisrael, which is the Ramban Shita, but only the Ramban Shita. <clears throat> and then you can talk about even if it's not a formal mitzvah, one of the 613 mitzvahs, it's still clearly central to Kol Terkula. This we spoke about in the second episode of the series, and then again in the fifth. And as we explained in the fifth episode, the fifth shir, the centrality of Eretz Yisrael in the Torah is important in terms of us living up to that, if we understand it. Meaning, if we don't understand what the Torah wants with Eretz Yisrael, why is Eretz Yisrael so important to the Torah? What's the big deal about a piece of land? What's the big deal about Bnei Yisrael all living in a piece of land? If we can't answer that question clearly, then the truth is that there's not any, there's not a clear basis for saying that we should go. Because Bishlam, this I refer you, this is a subtle point, if you want to understand it better, I refer you to go review uh, episode number five. If the Torah says something as an absolute way, do this, then obviously that means do it, whether you understand it or not. But if you're going to base action on the fact that, okay, the Torah maybe doesn't say an imperative, do this, because only the Ramban counts it as a formal chiv, mitzvah chiyuvis, that um, where the Torah says an imperative, you must l- take out Israel and live there, you'll say, but okay, it's still clearly what the Torah is all about, right? Well, what about it is what the Torah is all about? What does the Torah want us to get from Israel? The Torah doesn't want us just to be there. The Torah has some, it's part of some bigger picture. The Torah is teaching us something, and to the extent that we understand it, it becomes an imperative for us to do it. But to the, but if we don't understand it, as we discussed, you can't really say that we have to do it. Perhaps it only means something if it has an effect on you. Perhaps it only means something in a certain context. For example, if you say, well, Hashem told Avram, Lech L'chot Sashar Echo, it's clearly so important. Well, what exactly does Lech L'chot Sashar Echo mean? What did Hashem want Avram to accomplish? And how do you know that's important for you? How do you know what you can accomplish? And another way to say this is the Gemara in Ksubis tells us this tremendous promise of Eretz Yisrael. Kol Ador Eretz Yisrael Shori B'loi Oven. So I want that. I like that. I like that idea. Shori B'loi Oven. So I want to know how. How can we actually get that? Not just words. Oh, it's a wonderful thing to live in Eretz Yisrael because Shoei Beloven. That's, that's a silly thing to say because if you live in Eretz Yisrael and you're not Shoei Beloven, then that Gemara 
is clearly not doing it for you. So I want to understand, okay, what about Etzel will make you belay oven? How will it make you belay oven? And again, if Chas Shalom, we would be completely mufka from that. If you would be able to say, well, the Gemara says, but there's no way that that could work for you. And that's not correct. I don't believe that's correct. I'm bringing up out a point. If you'd be able to say, well, that can't work, then there's no clear Malcolm to say, well, we have to go because that's also special. Because I'll say, well, why is it so special? Because if you live there, you shall but it's not working for you. So my point is that the understanding of what Red Soul is about is very central, very integral, not just, of course, you have to understand everything to tell you what it's about, but not just for that, but in this case, for establishing practice, establishing Maisa. Mela, if something is a clear cut, unequivocal command, then Tamiha mitzvahs becomes secondary. But if something is, if you're going to base action on the centrality of Eretzel, then it becomes important to understand why it's so central and how will you get what makes it so central. So, I mean, what are we going to do in Eretzel? We're going to go to Eretzel, Stam, to be in Eretzel. What does the Torah want that we should do in Eretzel? So, that's why this is, as I've been discussing, I've been promising this to you in, in this series, that's why I want to talk about this in for the next few shirim to complete this series. Because this series is the dedicated question of should we live in Eretz Yisrael, but really, although I, I made last week's share summary, in fact, we really can't say we fully answer this question until we understand what Eretz Yisrael is all about. So, I want to understand what's Eretz Yisrael in the Torah, and like I said, there's a very practical ramification. If we understand it and we can do it, and if we understand what the Torah wants us to get from Eretz Yisrael and how, then we must do so. And we should do so. I don't really care what we must do. I care what we should do. Again, because we're not talking about chiyuvim. We're talking about what chiyuvim in the sense that Torah gives an imperative, but chiyuvim in the sense that it's a chiv upon us to pursue the taif. And if chas shalom, we say, well, we understand what, what Eretz Yisrael is about and we can't have anything to do with that, then we shouldn't go there. Now again, I believe we could have something to do with what Eretz Yisrael is all about, and I think we must have a shaykhist to that because it's in the Torah. And I want to go through how we can have a connection to that, what that connection is. So, but let me be very clear. Let me be very clear about this. I, this is my opinion about this and it's a subtle matter and it's important to understand. I do not mean that the mitzvah of living in that soil is limited to those who can understand the next few shurim and understand what that soil is all about and what it's supposed to do to a person and how the person is supposed to reach that sublime level certainly not everyone should go but those who are capable of understanding what it is about they must do so and those are the leaders those are the tzaddikim who by example can lead the simple people the masses with through their understanding of what it is all about and influence them by their example if no one understands what it is all about if no one understands it on the deepest and most sublime and transcendent level of spiritual pursuits, then there won't be leaders. Or the leaders will lead the people incorrectly. So that's why I say it's a very subtle discussion here. Clearly, at Saul and the Torah is not is about getting something. As the Pasuk says, Kim. So being an Eretz Yisrael is supposed to get you somewhere. Does that mean that every individual has to get to that level or else he doesn't belong in Eretz Yisrael? No, I don't believe that because there are certain individuals that are followers. Certain individuals that support a community. They're called Ameha Oretz. The people that just support the land. If someone's highest calling in life is to be a farmer, to be a, a good farmer and have nothing more to his life, then he should go do a, be a farmer in Eretz Yisrael. But who's going to be the leader? Who's going to set into place the, the, the orientation of people to the spiritual growth, which will trickle down to the person who might not be able to articulate it, might not be, might be able to understand it. Those are the tzaddikim, those are the midichachamim, and these, the, the following few shurim are addressed to them in a certain way. I think everyone can learn from this, but in a certain way, as a halachic matter, I believe that these ideas have to be worked out by the leaders so that 
the return to Eretz Yisrael that we should all engage in should be um, beneficial for all. It's subtle. I encourage you to think about it. Um, and understand that these kinds of ruchnius matters and how they affect communities, societies are lend lend themselves to these kinds of subtleties. It's not going to be so clear cut. You have to think about these things deeply and realize that they are uh, more subtle than than might appear at first glance. So again, the simple people should go as simple people. The sophisticated, uh, if the Hashem should understand <clears throat> how does that all contribute to, to Avodah Hashem and in what way. And actually, there's another point. If there's going to be a massive movement of returning to Eretz Yisrael, it will only happen. It will only happen if there are people who understand what Eretz Yisrael is all about and are inspired and 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 really on fire for that, for those ideas, and are passionate and motivated by them. And again. That's also not a, a black and white thing. To the degree that we all understand it, we'll all be inspired and we'll all lead to action. So those are the purposes of why we have to think about it. So let's go ahead and and let's jump into the holy work that um, there is no higher work than understanding this. What's it all about? You know, the Torah tells us that So Torah is easy, right? It is easy, but it's only easy. It's very important. It has to be very clear. So that's our goal. That's the goal I'm setting for myself and for the next few discussions, that we want to understand what it's all about so that it becomes easy. It can't be too deep and too abstract. Maybe in its root it is. But Lemaisa, if it's not then we're not doing the Torah the right way. So that's what we're aiming for, a usable, practical ideas of what it's all about. Kifi, that it's Yaitse from the Torah. Now, in order to understand what it's all about, we're going to have to j- jump in and obviously engage deeply in understanding the Torah and the Nevi'ah. And the fact is, and here we'll begin with what it's all is. The fact is that the idea of Eretz Yisrael, the concept of Eretz Yisrael, the, the promise of Eretz Yisrael, is actually, like many secrets, Right there where we where it should be. And that's in the Pasik by Yom Hashem Al Avram, Lech Lecha, Mi'aretzcha, 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 El Ha'aretz Asher Ar Eka. El Ha'aretz Asher Ar Eka. That word over there, Ar Eka, where Hashem told Avram, go to the land that I'm going to show you, that word contains the secret of Eretz Yisrael. Here's what it means. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what it means and we're going to talk about how to get it. And of course, I want to show you how I know this, how this develops from the Torah and Tanakh from Chazal. But I'm not going to give you all the background and then tell you what it means. We're going to discuss what it means and then we're going to talk about the drushes and we're going to expand about this and we'll explore it. It's not something that can just just be given al regalachas in its totality. So I'm going to tell you what Areka means, what's the significance of this, and we'll explore the Pesukim, and as these next few Shurim develop, we'll get to understand it better and see how this comes out from Tanakh and what Mo'ashem Alekech Aroitze Shoyal Mi'imach. When Hashem tells Avram, I want you to go up to a land that I will show you. What he's telling him is that there's a possibility for Avram to see things in a godly way. Ashera Echo means, you know, like if you see something really cool and you tell someone, hey, you know, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. What does that mean? You're trying to, with that statement here, I want to show you something, means I appreciated something. I saw something and I really enjoyed it. It, it affected me. I got, I'm really interested in it. And I'm telling my friend, oh, come along. I want to show you. I, I want you to experience what I'm experiencing. And that's what the Shereka means. Shereka means Hashem told Avram there's a land that I want you to see 
in the same way that I see it. And that's the idea. The idea is that there's a land where it's possible for us to see things the way Hashem does. And where does this happen in the story of Lech Lecha? So you know what happens in, in Pasha's Lech Lecha. Hashem told Avram in Paragid Beis, Lech Lecha, Arzcha, Me'arzcha, etc. To the land of Shara Echa. And Avram goes, and then there's a hunger, and then he goes to Mitzrayim. And then he comes back from Mitzrayim. Wealthy, and there's the quarrel between him and the between his shepherds and Light's shepherds. And he splits up with Light. And he tells Light to pick a part of the land. So Light picked up his eyes and saw fertility, wealth. Vashem Omar Lavrom, Achare he poured late my emoi. After Light separated from Avram, Vashem to Lavrom, Sonna e Necho Ure. Mina Moka Mashata, Sham Tafon of Negba, came over Yoma Ki Escolat, Asher at Roy El Ho Ateneno. Says the Benezra, clearly, this is the Asher Areko. Hashem told Avram, Lech Lecha, go off to the land that I will show you. Well, when did he show it to him? This is when he showed it to him. Now, when Hashem tells Avram, lift up your eyes and see, it's a nevuah. Avram saw the arets in the eye of the nevuah, in the eye of prophets, of prophecy. And there's a contrast in the Pesukim. Lloyd picked one part of land of Canaan, which was Kigan Hashem Keretz Mitzrayim. And Avram picked the rest, obviously, of Canaan. Lloyd picked up his eyes and saw what human beings tend to see. Lush, green, luscious, green, fertile lands that attracted him to their wealth. While Avram, and this is the contrast in the Pesukim, Avram picked up his eyes by the command of God, by the command of Hashem. So, while light sees things in one way, Avram was zeicher to our echo, to see things the way Hashem wants him to see things. So what does that mean? What does it mean to see things the way Hashem wants you to see things? So what does it mean to see something? To see something is our basis of understanding things, our orientation to reality. We see things in a certain way. Meaning when I look at something, what do I see? Well, I see what's important to me. I don't see what it's unimportant to me. All sight, whenever we see things and we experience things and then we process them, is essentially rooted in fundamental ideas about reality and what's important to us. And that's called, it's called a schema, really, in, in psychology. There's a pattern of thought, of behavior, and we organize information in certain patterns of thought. It's like a mental structure. It's, it's certain ideas that you bring when you process the world. It's a framework that you have on the world. And everything we see, everything we experience, we fit into a certain framework. And we actually notice things that fit into our schema, meaning, let's say you're a very self-centered person, which is the most basic ideas of people's um, perception is that we see things as they relate to ourselves. So that's going to color how what we see, what we notice, and certainly how we see it. And that is what I would call human vision. And that's what the Perik, the Pasuk and Lech Lecha is contrasting. Light picked up his eyes on his own, without a godly command, and saw what he wants to see. He didn't see that. He didn't see the way Sadaim looked to Hashem. He saw the way Sadaim looked to himself. Because that's how human beings tend to see things. To see something as Hashem would would mean to see the world as Hashem sees the world. That's an amazing thing. And that's what it means essentially to see things with the eye of Nebuah. 
It means to see it in the way that Hashem would have you look, in the way that's informed by Hashem's vision. Now, of course, this is what we have to explore more, exactly what this is, how we achieve it, what does it have to do with a land, and what does it have to do with that specific land. And we're going to get to that, all in due time. We will get to that. Now, before that, as we should also see, this is actually what the Chet the Miraglim is all about. See, the spies, the Miraglim, that were sent to see. So we always think, okay, they're sent to see. No, it's not just that they were sent to see something. They were sent on a mission about vision. Re'isem Aretz Mahi, their, their mission to see what the land is was actually not merely to see what the land is. It was to determine whether this kind of vision that's promised in the beginning of what the land is all about, whether that's attainable to Klai And here's one of the places where we can see that, which we will go into further. In the beginning of Pasha Shlach, the Pasuk says, Shlach Lecha Anoshim V'yasur Aseretz Kenan. <clears throat> and at the end of Parsha Shlach, there's a mitzvah of tzitzis, which teaches us, And that's because the mission of the Muraglam was a mission of vision. It was a mission of determining whether B'nai Yisrael and their leaders, represented by the leaders, the, the Muraglam, were able to do the right kind of vision. The right kind of vision is called our Eka. The right kind of vision is expressed not by Lloyd, who picked up his eyes and saw how things look, but by Avram, who picks up his eyes by Hashem's command, which means he learns to see what Hashem sees and how Hashem sees. And that's what the Miraglim were flawed in that regard. So if we, which is our job, Israel's job, to atone for the Chet of the Miraglim, it's important for us to know what exactly it was and how and how we can go how we can go about it because as we've been discussing in the previous room the Torah wants us to be an Etzel in the right way which means to atone for the Chet Miraglim again everything all these ideas will be made clear within the Pesukim of the Miraglim and but it has to be done slowly so that we can develop the ideas properly so if our echo means if the whole idea of the land is it's a place where you could see things as Hashem does so I want to know okay so what does Hashem see? What does Hashem see when He looks down at the earth? So, there is a Pasuk that tells us something about Eretz Yisrael. And the fact that Hashem sees Eretz Yisrael. And that's in Pasha's Ekev, where it talks about Perkid Alpha, it talks about the difference between Eretz Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. And it says, Eretz Yisrael is a land that Hashem Alekecha Doresh Aisa Tomid Eini Hashem Alekecha Ba. Hashem is always looking at it. And then, as we know, the Pasuk continues. Hashem is always looking. There will be rain. And if you don't, there will not be rain. So Hashem looks at a land to see if they are deserving. And specifically, Eretz Yisrael. The idea that Hashem looks at Eretz Yisrael is that He determines whether they're deserving to get rain. This is also a Pasuk in Mishle. The Pasuk in Mishle talks about the Ene Hashem. And the Pasuk says, B'chom makam Ene Hashem Tzoyfais ro'im v'toyfim. Tzoyfais ro'im v'toyfim. So what does Hashem see? What does Hashem do with His eyes? What does He see when He looks down on earth? So now we know. He sees what's good and He sees what's evil. And this makes perfect sense because... If you look back to the Barashas, Hashem creates the world, Vayar alekim ki toif. Vayar alekim ki toif. And then at the end of Parashas Barashas, after man introduces evil to the world, Vayar Hashem ki rabba ruasa adam. Oh, Hashem saw evil. So, when we talk about Hashem seeing, in other words, if you have, let's say, a certain job, you know, let's say you're a painter. So when you walk into a house, what do you see? You see if the paint is chipped. You see with the quality paint. If you're an engineer and you go on a bridge, you see if the bridge is built properly. 
So what does Hashem see? What does He look for? What does He care about, so to speak? How does He, how does He categorize things on this earth and this whole reality? So that's what these psukim are about. Hashem categorizes things by whether they are good or evil. So then, when Hashem invites Avram and says, Areka, what he's telling him is, there's a land where you could see things from my perspective. We see, typically what we see, what interests us. What interests us. That's what we see, that's how we process the world. And it's very limited. It's very sad. We're attached to bodies, so we're very limited, right? We're just all we have is our own experience. And we take that as, as a definition of reality. And that's how we go through life. And that's how we process the world. But what if we could process the world? What if we could process everything in a much more inclusive, total kind of um, perspective? That's amazing. It's basically like Navua, understanding the whole world, understanding Hashem's plan. That's our echo. That's the promise of our echo. To see what interests Hashem. Imagine if you could look at the world and see what it really is, the way, the way it is in truth. The way it is in truth, how Hashem sees it. It's an, it's an amazing thing. That is the idea of our echo. So what we have to understand is, okay, so how did Avram get there? Avram Avinu got to this madrega of seeing things the way Hashem does in a very specific place on earth. And we essentially are following the derech of Avram, continuing, I should say, the derech of Avram. So how did Avram get to see it? We have to learn Lech Lecha and understand it. What happened in the beginning of Lech Lecha that made Avram reach this level that he could understand the record? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. And then how could it do it to us? How come we usually don't do this? And how could we change that? How could a land change that? How could this land change it? These are all the questions. But I want to give a little bit of a, of a beginning, of a little bit of a haskhala about this. What exactly happened in the beginning of Lech Lecha? So we know the story. Shem told Avram, go to the land of Shara Eko. He wandered, he went to Knaan. And there was a hunger. He went to Mitzrayim, because that's where you go when there's a hunger. He comes back to the land of Canaan wealthy. Light picks the part of Canaan that's like Mitzrayim, as the Pasuk describes. Sudoim, Kigan Hashem, Keretz Mitzrayim. And Avram gets the rest of Canaan, the part of Canaan that's like Keretz Mitzrayim. You remember where it says like Keretz Mitzrayim? That's in Parshas Ekev, where it talks about the contrast between Eretz Yisrael and Mitzrayim. Eretz Yisrael requires rain which is, comes from the heavens, which means Hashem is mashgiach on Eretz Yisrael. Eine Hashem alekech habo. Hashem is always looking to see whether, as we said, whether they're good in Eretz Yisrael or whether they're bad, whether they're evil. Why is Hashem looking? Because <clears throat> Eretz Yisrael depends on the rain, which is intermittent, which is undependable, which may or may not fall. And the determination of that is whether they are worthy of it. Mitzrayim, as the Pasuk says in Pasha Zeke, Mitzrayim doesn't need rainwater. It has the Nile River. Whether they are good or bad in Mitzrayim, the Panosah is still guaranteed. That's the way Mitzrayim is structured. Hashem made Mitzrayim such that the income is built in, guaranteed, and will not change. Eretz Yisrael is built, is, is structured in that way. That there may or may not be Panosah, and therefore, Hashem is always looking, should there or shouldn't there be? And that depends on whether they're good or evil. That's the synopsis of Ahim Shemaya. And you notice that what happened in Lech Lecha parallels Ahim Shemaya. In Lech Lecha, where Hashem was, Avram was told to go to the Arat Hashem Echo, <clears throat> where there was a hunger. Because Netzolah might not rain, remember? But Mitzrayim is always safe. So Avram goes down to Mitzrayim. What's better? What's better? It's Canaan and Eretz Mitzrayim. You know the answer? It's a machlekes. Light and Avram. Light says Eretz Mitzrayim is awesome. He comes back to Eretz and he picks the part of Eretz that was Eretz Mitzrayim. Nothing better. 
Avram learned, also learned that there's a difference between Eretz uh, Canaan and Eretz Yisraim. And what's the difference? The difference is Eretz Canaan is susceptible to hunger, and therefore it's a land that Hashem sees. It's a land that Hashem looks at to determine, and therefore in that land Avram could learn to look to see in the same way Hashem does. Now I want to explain to you exactly what that means. I don't want to leave anything unclear. Everything has to mean something very specific, something very relatable in our world. Why if Hashem looks at the Aretz, why in the land of Canaan, which may or may not reign, is it easier to see things the way Hashem does? Because <clears throat> what are we advocating for? What I'm arguing for, what I'm, what I'm saying that the Torah is telling us, what Eretz is all about, is, is the possibility of seeing things from Hashem's perspective. Okay, so that, I th- hope, makes enough sense to you. To see something from Hashem's perspective means to say, to call out good and evil, what's right and what's wrong, not based on our personal interests, but based on the most eternal, lasting truths. That's what it would mean, and, and cosmic truths. That's what it would mean to see things from Hashem's perspective. Now, what if you have a society where whether their activity is good or evil in the eyes of Hashem, they still experience temporal <coughs> and physical goodness. So what happens is their own specific narrow temporal goodness becomes their whole definition of goodness, becomes all they care about. Because the eternal goodness, meaning what's good in the eyes of Hashem, is irrelevant. It doesn't affect them one way or the other. What affects them has nothing to do with the eternal good. But if you have a place where your personal goodness is not guaranteed, meaning the rain may or may not fall. And the rain will fall if you engage in eternal goodness. The rain will not fall if you don't engage in eternal goodness. Then what that does to you is that allows you to shift your focus, to shift your perspective from being your own personal interests to Hashem's interests. Because your personal interests and Hashem's interests align. That's what Vahayim Shema is all about. That's what Tzachar is all about. It's an amazing thing if you think about it. Tzachar Vahayim What you care about, what Hashem cares about, are going to have this interaction. Amazing thing. So that's what Avram learned. That this is a land where he could see things the way Hashem does. Because this is a land where what happens in the land has a response from Hashem. And therefore, he can learn to see things the way Hashem does. He can learn to care about what Hashem sees in the land of Canaan. That, um, in a nutshell, well, that will be the, our, our beginning of understanding this topic. Um, Eretzisol is a place where you could see things the way Hashem does. And now we can understand, you know, if you, why this Gemara says this crazy thing, that if you live in Eretzisol, you're sin-free. How could that be? Well, now we understand it because if only we would see the world correctly, we would really be free from sin. Really. Because everything is rooted in how we perceive things. What's our schema? What, what's our framework for processing everything? See, if you have that aligned with Hashem's framework, everything else follows. But if you don't, then you're automatically going to sin. It's very sweet. It's very, it's, it's very sweet to think that, no, I'm not going to sin because I'm, I'm going to do everything right. You're not going to do everything right. You could, you could try your best. You won't if you don't have, and this is why the Chet Maraglam is, is, is the root of all sins, as we discussed. You will sin if you don't have Hashem's perspective. And if you do have Hashem's perspective, then doing good will follow automatically. This is the Haskala. This will be the beginning um, of, the, of the conversation. That's the idea. Thank you for listening and for thinking about this. Believe me, if I could do this all in, in a word or in a sentence or in a paragraph or in 20 minutes, I would. But these are very deep ideas which require exploration and consideration, thinking about. 
and going over and, and discussing. So, since I believe this is the utmost importance, we're going to give it what it requires, the amount of time that it requires, and the amount of time that's appropriate for something which is uh, at the aside of Kol Terakul, which is Eretz Yisrael.